I want to see that yeah, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that like a motorcycle or something? No, that's the lawnmower. Wow, what kind of lawnmower do you have? The thing with the, the with the thing on the end. <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> you made In Michael Jordan's 85-86 season, he broke his foot in the third game of the season against Golden State. He was out for 64 games, returned and in the final stretch of the season he pushed the Bulls into the playoffs where they lost against Boston, with Michael Jordan scoring 49 and 63 points in the first games of that series. A broken foot sidelined him for 64 games. Yet despite doctors' warnings and management's objections, Michael returned to the Bulls in time for their playoff drive, and many wondered why. One of my reasons for coming back was to really test the foot and see how much stress the foot can really take. If I would have sat out and then came back in September without really testing the foot in an NBA type of situation, and then I have problems, I'm missing next season. So I want to deal with it now. To sum up the first round of those playoffs, Jordan scored 49 points at Boston in the first game, which Chicago lost by 19 points, he scored 63 points at Boston in the second game, which Chicago lost by 4 points. And in the third final game, Jordan scored only 19 points in Chicago, and Chicago lost by 18 points. But let's not forget that Boston was led by probably one of the most legendary players of the NBA history, Larry Bird, who was in his prime in 86, won MVP, was finals MVP, and Boston eventually was the NBA champion that year. Let's first have a look at the 76ers lineup for this second season. And they did some trading and uh, drafting. So they drafted Emmanuel Moudier um, as, uh, as the third pick, I think. And uh, he's gonna be a strong point guard option coming off the bench this season. And they got uh, Courtney Lee from Minnesota um, for a pick. Uh, I don't know which pick it is. I can't really see it, but it's definitely uh, one of the picks that they traded for. So if you look at the starting lineup, we have Michael Carter Williams uh, at the point guard position. Uh, Michael Jordan at shooting guard or small forward. I think the 76ers um, are running Michael Jordan as the small forward shooting guard um, uh, most of the time and we have the healthy again Joel Embiid and together with Nerland Noel in the front court very very strong uh, front court right here at least defensively um, then I don't know who they will actually run as a shooting guard small forward in the starting lineup my guess would be they would either run uh, Jeremy Grant on small forward and then Jordan at the shooting guard position or they will run um, Courtney Lee at shooting guard and Michael Jordan at small forward. That is my prediction. <clears throat> um, on the bench we have uh, Moutier coming off as uh, the point guard. We have Tony Rotten who would probably play shooting guard coming off the bench. We have uh, Henry Sims, who I really, really like uh, as a, well, not so young anymore, but he's a good role player, good backup player. We have uh, KG McDaniels, who was a rookie last year. I really like him too. He's uh, pretty average, too good at everything he does. Very strong option from the bench. Um, <clears throat> these people right here, I don't think they will get a lot of minutes. Maybe him. He is a rookie. I don't know if he's an original rookie. I mean, or if he's a generated rookie from um, 2K. But I don't know how much uh, he, how much playtime he will actually get. Uh, and the rest, Charlie Villanueva. He's, I think he's pretty good at defense, right? Uh, I don't really remember, but I don't think those people right here will get a lot of minutes. So as you can see, the starting lineup is pretty, pretty average. Um, 
and my prediction is that the uh, 76ers coach doesn't really have a game plan for Jordan. We saw that last season as well, where he was conflicting with uh, Michael Carter Williams uh, in terms of uh, touches. And uh, Michael Carter Williams, he is uh, he's not really good at anything, like really good at anything. So I think he will get too many touches and uh, will not convert uh, these points. And in the end, that will uh, make Jordan's stats suffer. And uh, he will probably not be in the top, I don't know, uh, top 10 for scoring at least. Um, just because of the uh, conflict with uh, Michael Carter Williams. Um, I, I just think that the 76ers coach doesn't have a very good game plan uh, for having Jordan in the team. That is not the coach, that is more or less uh, NBA 2K on how the uh, game plans and coach settings and everything, how it comes out of the box. So we have to see about that this season. Um, and as you can see, Jordan only has one year left on his contract, so he will be a free agent uh, next season, which is going to be very interesting. And actually, he says in his little uh, status that uh, he is kind of uh, insecure about not having a, a contract for next season, but he will wait uh, how, turn, uh, how things will turn out before he signs a new contract. So uh, what we will maybe see, or what I hope we will see, um, is either Jordan leaving the 76ers, uh, becoming a free agent at the end of the season, or um, the 76ers will restructure a little bit and make a team, um, uh, a team around Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Carter Williams only has one year left uh, two. So I hope one of these guys will actually go. Look at that, all the good players have <laughs> one year left. So that's gonna be interesting to see uh, how the 76ers will uh, play next season or what, what they will consist of. We are going to watch the game. 76ers at Cleveland against the Cavaliers. Let's see how Michael Jordan does against LeBron James. Here we are, tip off at the Quicken Loans Arena. Mozgov wins it against Embiid and Cleveland initiates the first attack through LeBron James. Goes up against Jordan, passes it to Irving and Love comes up for the pick and roll. He gets the ball against Noel, goes for a fake and then for the easy layup with Noel not doing anything about it. So here we have Jordan with his first action of the game. Embiid comes up for the pick. Jordan passes it to Courtney Lee, who passes it back to Jordan, who goes for the pump fake, and LeBron gets fooled by it and commits the foul. Irving brings the ball up the court. Little hesitation move right there. He gets past Michael Carter Williams, passes it out to Moskov, to LeBron, to Iman Shumpert, who goes for the long range jumper which only counts two points because he was standing on the line. This is my favorite part of the first quarter. Irving thinks that Michael Jordan will attack the basket, but he doesn't. He passes it out to Michael Carter Williams, who's now open for the three, and he nails it. Take a closer look at LeBron right here. He's like lost somewhere, but not where he should be, guarding Michael Jordan, who goes up against Kyrie Irving, which is a little mismatch, and Michael Jordan gets to the basket for two free throws where he misses the second one. Let's have a look at LeBron James' superior physicality here. He just bullies past Nerlens Noel for the easy layup. And that's LeBron James for you right there. Let's look at this excellent pass by Michael Jordan right here. Nice bounce pass against Timothy Mozgov's knees. And uh, the Cavaliers punish this instantly. Nice transition and nice foul by Noel who fouls uh, Iman Shumpert. Misses one of his free throws. So nice foul right there by Noel. Fast break for the 76ers, Courtney Lee brings up the ball and look at that Jordan and Kevin Love that's a nice backcourt uh, mismatch right there and Michael Jordan too quick for Love goes for the post spin move and uh, shoots the fadeaway so now isolation Michael Jordan against LeBron James Michael Jordan tries to get past LeBron James doesn't really work but he goes up for a strong layup and gets fouled by LeBron James and look at that nice move right there by Embiid who uh, does a little post move right there and Michael Jordan comes rushing from behind. Embiid notices that, passes it to Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan again gets fouled and goes to the line for two, which he makes. 
Now Michael Jordan initiating the offense again. Goes for the spin move against Kyrie Irving who is very quick. But that is Michael Jordan right there. Look at that nice step back jumper. So now on the last two minutes of the game we have the second lineup of the 76ers on the court. And I have to say I'm very impressed by the second lineup. Moutier as a point guard it does a very good job at scoring and distributing the ball. Um, you know KG McDaniels who's an excellent shooter and we have Tony Rotten who's a definitely a decent scorer coming from the bench. So that concludes the first quarter right here. The 76ers are leading by 10 points. I kind of doubt that this will uh, continue on but uh, let's have a look and uh, start with the second quarter. Let's start off the second quarter with the first dunk of the game and who's going to be it? It's going to be LeBron James with the one hand slam coasting past Henry Sims right there and beautiful and uh, Tony Rotten is that Tony Rotten right there the number eight I don't know uh, he doesn't really know uh, who he is either I think and um, the second lineup of the 76ers is still on the court uh, except for Joel Embiid and we're going to look at some highlights of um, our second lineup here. As I said before, Moutier, I really like him, um, the way he uh, aggressively attacks. Look at this right here. That's really nice. He's not afraid to go up against uh, some players in the paint. And he gets to the line. And uh, he seems to be a decent free throw shooter because uh, he is making his free throws. So both starting lineups are back on the court. Nerland Snow with the nice steal and Michael Carter-Williams goes for the most lame transition dunk I have ever seen in my life, I guess. Michael Jordan trying to bully his way through in the paint, but he misses the layup. And on the other side, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, Iman Shumpert, LeBron James, and of course, Kyrie Irving, who goes for the three and he makes it. I hope Kyrie Irving is not gonna heat up here. That's not going to turn out very well for the 76ers if he does. And Kevin Love with the fadeaway post move. And it seems like the Cavaliers are closing the gap. Here we have Michael Carter-Williams against Iman Shumpert. And Iman Shumpert just scores very easily on Michael Carter-Williams. And again, LeBron James fouling Michael Jordan. I guess that is the only way to stop him in the end because he's such a physical, physical player. But let's not forget, we have another very, very physical player on the other team, which is LeBron James, who is a freak of nature uh, at that size and weight. And uh, Michael Jordan goes up against LeBron James here and um, makes the layup. And again, LeBron James, who tries to climb over Moutier's back. <laughs> We don't know, but Michael Jordan uh, quickly takes advantage of the situation and scores again. 15 points, 5 rebounds at the end of the second quarter. And uh, LeBron James seems to be fine. He passes it to Kevin Love, who scores the 3 points. And that concludes the second quarter. We have one more buzzer beater try right here from J.R. Smith, who uh, gets a nice chance, but he misses. And that concludes the first half. So we are at the start of the third quarter and uh, Kyrie Irving misses his layup and Kevin Love converts the second chance point. And we have an isolation play here for LeBron James against Michael Jordan, but he decides to pass it to Love and Love goes for the long range shot, the three, and Kevin Love is hot. Look at that, 22 points, nine rebounds. That is pretty good. Michael Jordan against LeBron James and Kevin Love and Kevin Love goes for the foul and Michael Jordan goes to the line and converts his two shots. It seems as if uh, the game is on Kevin Love's shoulders right now. He goes for a nice post move and gets fouled by Noel, makes the shot and goes for the and one. And we have the same play right here, Michael Jordan against LeBron James, and he passes it to Shumpert this time, who again goes for the three. Now we have Moutier on the court and this time he doesn't score. He goes for the pass to Noel who goes against LeBron James who doesn't know what's happening around him and uh, Noel goes for the easy layup and he's happy that he's made a shot. And again the 76ers. So Jordan has the ball. He goes up against Irving, passes it to Moutier, who goes up against Shumpert and Shumpert is dizzy and <laughs> Moutier goes for the mid-range shot right there right at the uh, top of the paint and that's an 8 run for the 76ers in the last two minutes. And Shumpert brings up the ball. 
What's gonna happen now? Mudia is guarding him. The Brown James is open, and the Brown James goes for the three and misses it. Noel for the rebound. Michael Carter Williams. Oh my god, Michael Carter Williams. He brings up the ball, and nobody's guarding him. Irving is too late, and Michael Carter Williams goes for an easy one hand shot, layup, whatever that was. So the Cavaliers coach is clearly not happy what's going on here. So he calls for a timeout, you know, to get the 76ers out of their rhythm. And Jordan is enjoying himself, taunting the crowd. And uh, here we have the Cavaliers cheerleaders. Some of them uh, didn't get the memo on what kind of pants to wear, I guess. So what kind of plan does the Cavaliers coach come up with to get the Cavaliers back into this game. It's an 11 point lead for the 76ers and he probably didn't tell Deladova to just lose the ball. But uh, KG McDaniels says thank you and goes for a very nice transition dunk. Um, if you remember the uh, lame ass uh, Michael Carter Williams dunk from the last quarter and that concludes the third quarter. Moutier for the buzzer beater doesn't hit it and I'll see you guys in the fourth quarter. We're in the fourth quarter. Michael Jordan initiating the first attack, spin move and turnover. It bounces off Jarrah Smith's leg who promptly takes the ball into the fast break. Well, not really. He uh, goes for the slow build up, passes it to Irving who's up against Henry Sims, which is a mismatch. And now Kevin Love is going up against a much smaller player right there, Jeremy Grant, who's our small forward in the second lineup. And he gets fouled and Kevin Love converts his two free throws. Kevin Love having a great game so far. He's got a double-double over 20 points and over 10 rebounds. And this right here is my favorite shot in basketball. It's a long range two pointer. I don't know why, but I really love that shot. Michael Jordan with the turnover. Iman Shumpert takes it up the floor. Passes it to Irving, who tries to go for the layup in the paint, and he makes it. He gets fouled by our dear friend, Michael carter William gets fouled and uh, converts the N1. So let's have a look at the ups and downs of Michael Jordan. He goes for the three, which is pretty uncommon for him. Then he nails the post fadeaway spin shot. And can he keep this up? He's got 18 points this half. That's almost as much as the rest of the team. And he's again in the post and he gets blocked. But Embiid is quick to react and uh, converts the layup. But then it kind of went downhill for Michael Jordan, at least for a couple of minutes. He misses that shot right there, which he normally hits. Then he tries to bully past Jarrah Smith, which doesn't work. He goes for a signature move and it misses again. Open jumper against LeBron James. He misses again. And now to top that off, he goes for the layup. I mean, it was against LeBron, but he still misses it. On the other side, we have Kevin Love, who's been hot like all game, and he nails that easy open mid-range jumper. And then again, we have Michael Jordan, who goes for a very difficult shot, even though there's a lot of time on the shot clock left. Kyrie Irving punishes that by nailing a very, very difficult three-point shot from the top of the key. And the 76ers coach, he calls for a timeout here, which is understandable. It's only four points between the Cavaliers and the 76ers with two minutes left. And the Cavaliers are not stopping. Look at Kevin Love here with the very, very difficult three-pointer and it's only three points. What will Michael Jordan do? Well, Michael Jordan will be clutch. And again, against LeBron James, what is he gonna do? Oh, he pulls up and he nails it. That's what I call clutch. It was three points. Now it's seven again and one minute to play. Michael Jordan, 39 points and five assists. That is, you can definitely feel the pressure now. Kyrie Irving, what is he gonna do? Can he stand the pressure against Michael Carter Williams? And he pulls up for the jumper and he makes it. So the Cavaliers still have a chance to win this game. What is Kyrie Irving gonna do? Passing to LeBron James and LeBron James, what is he doing? It's five seconds to play, but still that three, I don't know if that was the right decision. Maybe go for some easy points and then foul again and then try to close the gap. But now the game is literally over. It's five points and Michael Carter Williams, even though he doesn't do very well most of the time, he definitely does this very well. He uh, converts his last free throw and that decides the game. 114, 108 and Michael Jordan, player of the game.
so the 76ers are definitely on a playoff spot right here. The only dominant teams are are the Chicago Bulls, so there's still everything in it for the 76ers right here. 39 wins, 30 losses. Um, they lost seven of their last 10 games, but won the last two. Um, so I guess they're on a uh, winning trend, if that's what you call it. Um, let's have a look at the players itself. So Michael Jordan is definitely the most dominant player on the 76ers. Uh, he scored uh, 23.5 gained uh, points per game, which is uh, uh, the most. Uh, it's still not uh, like league best, but it's it's pretty good. Um, he's getting some rebounds. He's getting some assists. Those are like typical uh, shooting guard. Um, non-playmaking shooting guard stats right here it would be my guess you have like four rebounds four assists uh, his steals per game are uh, also the highest of the team uh, definitely not in the top league uh, percentage uh, if that's what you call it um, so we will have to see about that um, turnovers per game is of course the highest in the team but it's still pretty low um, he's getting the most touches, so no wonder he has the most turnovers. And now let's look at the field goal percentage, because this is pretty, uh, uh, pretty awesome. <clears throat> he has the highest field goal percentage, and that is uh, 0.546. That is uh, more like a center who uh, traditionally have the most, uh, the highest uh, free throw um, field goal percentage. Um, which is odd because if I look at other people right here, like Michael Carter Williams, for example, who is probably the second scoring option at the 76ers. Uh, I mean, he's averaging uh, 9.5 per game, uh, points per game, but it's still the uh, highest. No, the second highest. Let's, let's look at field goals attempted. Yeah, it's the second highest. So he's he's basically the second scoring option um, of the 76ers, and he's not doing a good job at it. Uh, look at his uh, uh, three-point percentage. That is uh, not very good, and he's attempting way too many three-pointers. Uh, most of the team, actually, and he's not converting a lot of them. It's still decent, but it's not... Yeah, he shouldn't be the uh, three-point shooter of the team. To be honest, he's pretty doing pretty good at assists, but I mean, if you have like Embiid, um, who's got pretty good hands, and you have Michael Jordan on the team, your assists could be higher. So, you know, Michael Carter Williams should pass the ball a little more and not try to uh, score himself that much. Um, who else do we have? We have surprisingly our best man coming from the bench, Mudiay, the rookie. Uh, averaging uh, almost 11 points per game, uh, four assists. He's doing okay, I guess. Yeah, he's our sixth sixth man, definitely. If you look at the uh, field goals attempted, that's the third highest out of all of them. The 76ers are not utilizing Embiid and well very much. I guess um, not very much uh, post game going on right there. Um, Look at Michael Jordan's uh, three-point percentage. That is actually pretty crazy. Uh, he's almost averaging 40% um, from the three-point line, even though his stats aren't that high. I think his, uh, his standing three-point is somewhere in the 60s, and his uh, running whatever in-motion three-point stat is like 71. Um, and he's almost made half of them. Oh, that's pretty crazy uh, not half but like 0.4 um, so he could go for more three-pointers well maybe not maybe that's just like uh, his his uh, best that he should do um, while watching the games I can tell you one thing and that is that uh, the 76ers are definitely not a very good fit for Michael Jordan's play style uh, but we'll see the game uh, very shortly and uh, I'll talk more about that or you can see for yourself. 
Yeah, so basically, not happy. And I don't, I don't think Jordan is happy either um, with his stats. So look at, let's look at his comments. Play for winner, extremely important. That might uh, make him leave. Mm, financial security is not that important, which is always good for leaving uh, in the end, because if he goes for a lower contract, more teams will be able to get him out of free agency. Um, his contract thought, I feel unsettled about not having a contract for next season, but I'm not ready to commit to resigning just yet. Yeah, so that's probably gonna depend on how the 76ers will uh, do in the playoffs. Uh, and I think they are going to play in the playoffs. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the league leaders at the moment. We have James Harden, uh, who's also a shooting guard, by the way. Um, he's playing really, really well. Look at that. Nine assists, seven rebounds, and 28 points per game. That is pretty, 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 pretty good. Same with Kevin Durant. Uh, also doing very good, uh, Damian Lillard, and of course the two uh, Golden State Warriors players right here, Seth Curry and uh, Clay Thompson, uh, doing crazy good. Um, I love how the Warriors are able to have two dominant players on the team and utilizing them well. Um, and Michael Jordan just above LeBron James when it comes to points per game. But if we look at the other stats like rebounds, assists, and uh, blocks, uh, we can see that LeBron James is doing better than Michael Jordan. But mm, let's be honest right here, it's Michael Jordan's second game. Uh, he's uh, very, very young. And if I recall correctly, I might have to correct this later on. He won his first title, uh, or he became like dominant in the league, uh, I think in his fourth or fifth year. I mean, you could tell he's a great player. Um, and all, but you know, to become the dominant player of the league, I think it took, took like four years or something. So we have to see about that. Let's have a look at the All-Star game. So it's already pretty late in the season. That's because I wanted to choose a, a certain game for viewing, which was against the uh, Cavaliers, which we'll see shortly. Um, but let's have a look at the uh, the All-Star Weekend, because I always think that's very interesting. So he definitely played in the Rising Stars game uh, on the Stars. Jordan definitely almost the best player, but they lost uh, 18 points, 6 assists, 2 blocks. That is pretty good. 60% field goal percentage. Very, very nice. Um, he didn't participate in the three-point contest Sim Curry won that what a surprise and he didn't participate in the slam dunk contest which Andrew Wiggins won which is very interesting because I just read about uh, Andrew Wiggins not participating in the in the real slam dunk contest because uh, he got like robbed uh, of his title in the high school was it high school or college uh, slam dunk contest yeah let's have a look at the all-star game uh, Michael Jordan, uh, the best player, oh, well, almost the best player if you look at Kevin Love right here, but uh, sharing the spot for best player uh, with Kevin Love is Michael Jordan, so he is definitely a good player in every scenario, um, but to become the greatest of all time, he will need a team that supports this, and uh, in my opinion, he's not on this kind of team right now. So let's simulate the rest of the season up until the playoffs and see um, how that will turn out. Okay, so we have the uh, season awards right here. Kevin Durant is the most valuable player and he has awesome, awesome stats. Um, 29 points per game, 9 rebounds, almost 5 assists, 2 steals, 1 block, nice field goal percentage, awesome free throw percentage and a very, very good uh, three point percentage. So he definitely deserves the most value player. We have rookie of the year, which is Jalil Okafor with 16.9 points and 7.7 uh, rebounds. That is uh, very, very good. I guess he is a uh, center or power forward uh, would be my guess. Mm, we have sixth, sixth man of the year. Uh, Munya, I didn't get it. 
but uh, Reggie Jackson got it, which is weird because Reggie Jackson doesn't play for the for Oklahoma anymore. And I thought that um, at the start of uh, NBA 2K15, he was already traded to was it the Pistons? Well, he has a very good stats uh, for a sixth man for five rebounds, five assists, 12 points, and that is pretty good. Defensive player of the year, we have Anthony Davis. Yeah, look at that. Two steals, two blocks, almost 12 rebounds, 21 points. Most improved player is Adrian Payne, whoever that is. <laughs> Most improved player, 8.4 points, 6.1 rebounds. He must have sucked a lot before to become the most improved player in this season because those stats aren't very impressive. Coach of the year is uh, Scott Brooks um, from the Thunder. They look at that record, man. That's oh, that's his record. Okay, is it his record, or is it the, no? It must be the team's uh, record, which is uh, 67 wins and 15 losses in the strong uh, Western Conference. Crazy. Let's continue. Let's have a look at the all NBA first team. We have James Harden, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, DeMarcus Cousins. Those that is a very uh, very tough competition for Michael Jordan. Um, and uh, my opinion is he does really have to switch teams uh, to become the greatest of all time again because he probably won't be at the 76ers unless they start um, getting some good players around Michael Jordan in. Uh, NBA second team, no Michael Jordan right here. We have Damian Lillard, John Wall, uh, Paul George. Nice that Paul George is back on track again. Uh, Gordon Hayward from our viewing team, the Utah Jazz. Um, that is weird. And Al Hofford from uh, the Atlanta Hawks. Third team, no Michael Jordan. Crazy. Uh, I mean, if Jimmy Butler, he played really, really well for the Bulls this season. They have the best record in the East. And uh, I mean, if and Kevin Love also, I mean, if they are in the all NBA third team, no wonder Michael Jordan isn't here because they played really, really good and are still only in the all NBA third team. Uh, in all defense first team, Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, Anthony Davis, Paul George, Dwight Howard. Wow, look at that. A lot of Eastern players right here. And we have Michael Jordan right here in the all defensive second team with Chris Paul, Michael Jordan, Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Jordan. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, all rookie first team. We have Jaleel Okafor. He's a. Uh, wow, so many forwards. <laughs> Crazy. So he's a center, as I predicted. And we have Moutier, I really like him um, in the game. He plays really, really great. Uh, in my opinion, he tries to get to the basket and score and uh, he gets to the line a lot. I really like this player more than Michael Carter Williams, to be honest. Um, the all rookie second team, we have Bully Colley Stein. Hmm, okay, that's it. Let's look at the uh, playoffs. Okay, who is the 76ers up against? Against the Toronto Raptors. That is going to be pretty, pretty tough. Hmm. All right. Let's have a look at the first game. And the Raptors win the first game. The Raptors win the second game. The Raptors win the third game. Oh, shit. Let's have a look at the uh, the game. Can we actually see it? You can only watch the next one. Um, let's simulate the next one. Oh, let's look at the box score. Michael Jordan, yeah, 35 minutes, 20 points. Not that impressive, uh, to be honest. Look at DeRozan, 31 points. Wow, Ross. 27 points. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably no match. The 76ers are no match for the Raptors. Let's have another quick look at the um, the West right here. The Thunder dominating, of course. Spurs against Trailblazers. Interesting, the Rockets are 3-0 behind the Grizzlies. And the Pelicans are uh, fighting 
the Warriors. Mm, so let's simulate the next game. And the 76ers win their first game. Nice. Oh, look at Hornets Cavaliers. That is interesting. Um, the Kings win the first game, the Rockets win their first game, and the Pelicans have tied the uh, playoff round right there. Let's have a look at the box score. Uh, Michael Jordan, wow, 31 points, five rebounds, five assists, four steals, three blocks. Michael Jordan really turning up his game a notch right there. Uh, Michael Carter Williams, four steals. And uh, Mudiay coming off the bench. Look at that, Mudiay is getting more and more minutes uh, taking part, uh, taking minutes off of Michael Carter Williams. So that is very interesting to see. I really like it. I like that a lot. And. Um, but I have doubts that the 76ers will survive this next game. Oh, they do? Look at that. They win another game. The Bulls have moved on. 4-1 to one against the Wizards. <clears throat> the Knicks are very clearly through to the next round. Warriors, uh, th they, they, uh, they uh, won the next game. They are 3-2 now. Rockets have moved up, uh, are getting closer to the Grizzlies, and the Trailblazers against the Spurs. Um, Trailblazers have turned it around, so that would be interesting to see if the Spurs will actually uh, get out of the playoffs, and the Thunder very dominantly in the next round. So let's see if we, uh, if the 76ers win this next game. They don't. The 76ers are officially out of the playoffs. And uh, <clears throat> Michael Jordan having a good game. Again, four steals. Um, Mike Carter Williams almost there with a double double. Very low double double, but look at that. Look at Noel and look at Embiid. Look at those rebound stats. Let's have a look at the Raptors. The Raptors got a lot of rebounds throughout. 44 rebounds. How many did we get? 28. Yeah, we lost that game uh, on the boards. Uh, would be my guess. Yeah. Which is surprisingly because Embiid and Well are very good rebounders. Um, yeah, that kind of sucks. So will that seal Michael Jordan's uh, fate? Leaving? Could be. Could be. So we have the Raptors against the Knicks. And the Cavaliers actually make it against the Hornets. Winning the next two games. Uh, Bulls against Cavaliers. A very interesting matchup. Uh, the Spurs have tied, uh, Rockets have tied, the Warriors win against the Pelicans. All right, let's simulate the next game. Uh, oh, we can't. Can we? Simulate current round. All right, the Rockets managed to win against the Grizzlies. That is a big comeback right there. They're going against uh, the Warriors now. And a Thunder against a Trailblazers. I think the Spurs would have been a better match against the Thunder. I think the Thunder will win this pretty clearly. And uh, I think the Raptors will win, win, win here. And the Bulls will probably win against the Cavaliers. We have to see about that. So the Bulls are up by one. Trailblazers are up by one. Warriors are up by one. Um, Bulls up by two. Those two matchups are tied. The Raptors are leading 2-0. 3-0 for the Bulls and for the Raptors. And the Rockets are leading against the Warriors. Thunder are up by one game. Uh, yeah, the Bulls just demolish the Cavaliers um, and are in the conference final. And the Rockets are winning against the Warriors. Is somebody injured here? No. They're both playing. Um, next game. Okay, the Thunder win that round against the Trailblazers. As I predicted, we have the Raptors against the Bulls in the East. And the Thunder maybe against the Rockets. Oh, 3-3. Very interesting. Oh, and the Rockets win the seventh game. And are up against the Thunder. So my prediction is Bulls against Thunder. That is a pretty awesome matchup right there. But the Raptors win the first game. And the Rockets win the first game. Both series are tied now. Thunder win game two, Raptors win game two. Raptors win game <clears throat> four, sorry. 
the Thunder win game four. Yeah, it's Thunders against Raptors. Oh, the Raptors are Canadian friends. And the Raptors win the first game. It's tied. Raptors win the third game. Oh, the fourth game. Oh, Raptors. Oh, what the hell, man? DeMar Rosen is kicking ass. And Terrence Ross, holy shit. I, I always like Terrence Ross a lot. Oh, 3-2. And the Raptors... <laughs> the, ba the Raptors win the championship. That is awesome. That is crazy against the Thunder. I really like the Raptors. Um, oh, look at Valanciunas. 28 points, 12 rebounds. He really... Uh, Stepped up his game there. Crazy. Nice. So, most valuable player, probably DeRozan. Uh, Kyle Lowry. 15.2 points per game. Six rebounds for point guard. That is pretty crazy. Almost nine assists, two steals. Yeah, he deserves it. Bad three point percentage though, uh, but that's probably finals imminent. Oh, there we go. Michael Jordan is still with the 76ers and he signed a five year contract for 105 million. That's pretty crazy. I, I certainly did not expect this. I thought he was going to leave after that first round playoff loss. Um, and Embiid is getting stronger and stronger, and that is nice. And one thing I really like is that Murier is better than Michael Carter Williams now, which basically mean, uh, means, if I uh, interpret the AI correctly, that Murier will be the new point guard starter, the starting point guard. And that is actually very good, except the coach decides to run Murier uh, at the shooting guard position and Michael Carter at point guard. But uh, I have to say now, uh, the build-up, um, the offensive build-up of the 76ers is not working with how Michael Carter Williams' uh, tendencies are going. So if there is a next season, I will definitely alter uh, Michael Carter Williams uh, tendencies to make him more of a pass first uh, non three point uh, shooting guy. I mean, he can attack the basket, and that is definitely okay if you look at his inside scoring. That's a B, that's pretty good. But he's definitely, take, uh, definitely taking too many three point shots and mid range shots. Uh, so I'm definitely going to change that. <clears throat> and the rest of the team, uh, we don't really have. Well, they're okay. I'm actually quite happy with the team. So let's have a look at the power rankings and see where the 76ers and Michael Jordan are situated for the next season. Power rankings. Okay, we have the Oklahoma City 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 Thunder on the first spot. Golden State Warriors, Chicago Bulls, and the Philadelphia 76ers. That is actually pretty nice, but uh, kind of thought it would be because uh, our teammates are young and they're getting better and better every year especially Embiid, Noel and uh, Moutier now I don't want to talk about Michael Carter Williams um, yeah look at that. I think the East is uh, getting a little stronger teams we have the Chicago Bulls and the 76ers now plus the Toronto Raptors and that is cool Really looking forward to the next season and how that is going to turn out, especially, especially, I have to emphasize that again, <clears throat> if the coach manages to uh, get the team together, build it around Michael Jordan, and uh, doesn't give Michael Carter Williams the ball that much. All right, guys, so thanks for watching, thanks for waiting, thanks Barani for editing everything, and uh, Goodbye, see you guys in the next video.